Hi, this is Shin from Celsius. Uh, some of you may know me from our previous videos. Hi, uh, I'm Alex, and uh, I've been on a previous video. I hope you're having a lovely day. So for today's stream, we're going to be introducing some new features. So finally, 2.0 is here, the first major Eclipse Studio Paint update, and we have a demonstrator here with us uh, to show us the features. Yes, uh, our demonstrator today is Ito, uh, who will be joining us through the interface Computer. here. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And hello. Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions during the stream, please make sure to uh, post them in the comments or in the chat, and our mods will answer the best they can. So let's get to the features. The first one is a new color mixing mode, perceptual color mixing. Uh, you can use this on brushes with color mixing enabled. And let's see uh, using the thick paintbrush. So by default, this uh, is going to be disabled and if you're upgrading from version mm -hmm. 1 to 2.0. Uh, so you'll have to go into the Subtool Detail palette to change the mode. Yeah, I think it's under Ink mm -hmm. um, and then Mixing Mode. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looked like up until now. So there's a yellow and then when we layer blue on top of it, you can see it kind of turns into a muddy grayish mm. kind of color. Yeah. So now that she changes the mode to Perceptual, So we go yes. down there, change the mode, and layer, put down the yellow. Same as before, mm -hmm. same colors as before. And now it becomes more of a greenish Ooh. color, <laughs> yeah. which is more uh, expected uh, if you were painting, for example, with watercolor or more traditional mediums. So you can control the brightness correction and kind of fine tune the results which is the benefit of using you know, digital medium. You can mm -hmm. kind of go in, find right. out what works for you best. So even so, if you think this is too much mixing, then you can kind of pull it back a bit, mm -hmm. uh, see what matches your art, what your style. Right. Customizable is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the next feature that we want to show you is Shading Assist. I think a lot of people were excited about this one. This automatically shades flat color images. Um, so first, you want to select the layer that you want the shadows applied to. Uh, if you have a line art layer, you want to set that as a reference uh, so that it can reference the line art as well when it applies the shadows. Um, so here we're going to apply the shadows now. Mm -hmm. So this is our flatted image. So mm -hmm. the goal here is to kind of match the background, the lighting with the background. So up until now, you would go in manually, kind of figure out where the light is coming from, and then draw in depending on the shapes. But with auto, mm -hmm. with shading assist. Yeah, here you have this orb that appears on the screen. Uh, this is the controller of your light source uh, so that you can pull around the center to have the light go different areas, like uh, as you can see here in the demonstration. And then the outer rim you can use to control the strength of the light. And uh, there's also uh, this dialog that you see here uh, has presets, and there's various presets in this pull down menu where you can change between different preset lighting conditions. So you have a whole collection of uh, lighting settings you can choose from. So there is different uh, timings. So for example, if you're looking for a sunset, it's there. If you're looking for nighttime, it's there. Uh, but there's also different lighting conditions. So there is also a rim lights, uh, mm -hmm. which will light up the outside of the character to Kind of accentuate the back the to separate them from the background if that's what you're looking for and you so it's really flexible and uh, you can also save that your own presets as mm -hmm. well so you can start off with the preset adjust the color um and whatnot to your liking and then save that if you want to reuse it again if it's something you're going to be uh, applying to different characters or uh in different settings um, whatever suits your needs, um, you can yeah. have it on And you hand. can see here that she's separated the shadow onto a different layer. 
Um, so you can also do that and then change blending modes uh, and change it as you like to fit with your drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is it. Oh, also one thing, um, Shading Assist comes mm -hmm. with different uh, settings as well. So there is a uh, light that comes from, is directional, that comes, mm -hmm. uh, that you can move it around and yeah. adjust it. But there's also a directional light, so it comes in from one side of the screen. Um, so if you can you want to test that out, uh, it is fully available. Okay. So next feature. In 2.0, we've added a lot of 3D features as well. Um, let's take a look at the new head model, which is on screen right now. Uh, so in, you'll find, be able to find this in the new head section of your material palette. So you drag and drop it on screen and you'll be able to access it. So the idea with this model is that you adjust it to fit your character. Mm -hmm. So in the subtool detail palette on the right side here, you'll see there's a three by three grid with multiple head yeah. shapes. Um, it's a bit small on screen, but each of these heads is actually a certain um, like a preset. Preset. Yeah. Yes. It's like a kind of so there's, rough face. <laughs> so there's a very face. muscular, realistic yeah. face. There's also a chibi face. There's a skull ish face, which you can mix and match uh, to fit whatever you need. And here, uh, our demonstrator mm -hmm. is uh, touching it and uh, doing different values. Mm -hmm. If you increase the value, you increase that face's presence in mm -hmm. the final result. So by default, you can just slide the parameters how uh, as much as you want, which of course, if you are maximize everything and kind of mash all of the faces together, you're going to end up with something very <laughs> frightening. <laughs> Frank is so, saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, so there is a feature that limits the uh, amount of mixing mm -hmm. things, so it'll still look natural in the end. Um, I think you can take that limiter off, though, mm -hmm. if you want to make more cartoony type faces. Mm -hmm. You can also adjust the size and settings of each uh, part. So right now on the right side, that is a side section of the face. So you'll be able to adjust the eyes, the nose, the uh, forehead, the cheeks um, to more match the, per, uh, the uh, face of your characters. So this way you can get exactly the face that you want to draw. Um, and you can use this like you would use 3D drawing figures, which you could either use it on the side to look at, or you can trace over it by lowering the opacity and then drawing over it. Um, and you can also register these heads as material so that you can keep the same characters that you're drawing over and over again. So say if you're drawing a webcomic and you have a main character, then you can mm -hmm. make their head once and then you would have lighting reference, you would have different angles of their head at your, uh, disposal, at your yeah. disposal at any time you want. And uh, our next feature is, I like this head, um, the expression <laughs> he made here is very cute. <laughs> Version 2.0 introduces the hand scanner for the 3D drawing figure as well. This makes uh, hand posing a lot better because before you had to do each finger individually to do a hand pose, but instead of fooling around with a manipulator, you can now use your device camera to pose your hand in real time or pose their hands in real time. Um, so right now we're going to try it out. Mm -hmm. So this is our character. Let's say we want to change the pose of the hand. So up until now, you would have to move around each individual finger and see what works for you. But now we can use the hand scanner like this and I can move my hand Ooh. to fully and organically mm. pose. Yeah, here. So, organically is, is nice. <laughs> yeah, so let's say I want like a hand open, I could do that. I can also go for like a knuckle or mm -hmm. more specific fingers, say rock on. Right. <laughs> and like that. So you can uh, adjust it like this. You can also switch out which hand it's referencing and it'll apply, uh, or rather it'll correctly apply the mm -hmm. hand. And you can pause the camera at any time, freeze the hand in motion. And yeah, you can get more natural, more, uh, What's the um, Org like organic, organic, yeah, yeah organic before, results. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Results. 
And uh, that's it for mm -hmm. our hand scatter. Mm -hmm. The next is... So the <laughs> other uh, update that we have in 3D is the touch gestures. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were kind of showing it a little mm -hmm. bit before. Yeah. The iPad. <laughs> so we have new touch gestures when you're using the iPad. So up until now, you the manipulating 3D models was a bit unintuitive. But mm -hmm. now that we can activate uh, touch gestures in the object tool, so you have two finger motions like this mm -hmm. or and zooming in by pinching. Oops, yeah, that was going a, bit a crazy. fast one. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit better. Um, it's a bit awkward and showing it, but like that. <laughs> you can also use one finger to rotate. Nice. So that and two fingers is moving around and panning. It's like the game, like uh, follow my hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I do me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you yeah. can move it like that. So actually a lot more easier to control, more intuitive, and we hope yeah, that uh saves a lot of headaches. <laughs> yeah. No pun intended mm -hmm. <laughs> with the head model. <laughs> There are also some other small adjustments to the 3D function, one of them being the 3D camera tilt correction. Mm -hmm. um, so now our demonstrator will have this on screen. Uh, this is a 3D model uh, before the tilt correction. Uh, when you have a high or low angle, um, it's hard to reconfigure it to be straight on so that you have a nice two point perspective. Um, so she's going to open the sub, well, I guess she has <laughs> the sub tool detail palette open. And at lens, uh, right now it's moving around the lens, and she can press straight in, and this will change the angle to be yeah straight uh, to adjust. Here we have before and after. She's toggling between them mm -hmm. so that you can see. Yeah. So yeah, of course, three point perspective is more realistic, but let's be honest, it takes a lot of time, and there's a lot to consider when doing that. So you can kind of force it back into two point mm -hmm. perspective, make it a lot more easier to draw the backgrounds, um, kind of make it more, um, not yeah. natural looking, but more- uh, <laughs> easier, easier for you yeah. to draw, yeah, in your two point perspective. Also, there's a lens shift uh, where you can adjust values to keep the camera uh, in the same uh, place, but then you can shift around uh, up and down, mm -hmm. left and right, uh, so you can have a different point of view. Mm -hmm. So you won't lose your position every single time. You, you'll be able to more fine tune what you're what you're in looking at in mm -hmm. screen. Okay. So our next update is the new fisheye option in the perspective ruler. Yeah. So fisheye perspective, um, very niche, but yeah. very <laughs> popular as well. You. It gives like drama mm -hmm. to uh, a piece of art. Yeah, um, I think everyone's seen memes about anime using it, just like the <laughs> distorted faces and mm -hmm. whatnot. But um, yeah, you can. There's a lot of uses for it. You can use it subtly um, as well. So right now we have a rough sketch on screen. So you can see that it's already kind of warping out. And if we try to use our traditional. Uh, perspective ruler, it right. isn't going to match this perspective. So it's not warping near the edges mm -hmm. and whatnot. So with the new perspective ruler options, we can change the settings and activate a fisheye ruler. So it's a bit harder to see yeah. right now. There's um, the handles, they just appeared. Yes. But we have uh, handles on the bottom and top that are warping the perspective ruler in a fisheye lens shape. So now if we try to draw on the rulers, let's draw yeah, in Yeah, draw in red, red to stick out a bit more. <laughs> yeah, and here you we turn see on the bend. snapping. Yeah, you can yeah. see the on the pillars on the right side, they're warping to match mm -hmm. the perspective, uh, to match the fisheye perspective. That's cool. A lot mm -hmm. less work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you don't have to do difficult uh, warping calculations or like draw construction lines that mm -hmm. are just a mess in the end. You can figure, figure out an angle that works for you, turn snapping on, and you're pretty much set. 
Um, so this piece was made by uh, an illustrator, Zo Nose. So thank you to mm -hmm. Zo Nose. Mm -hmm. And just to note that uh, 3D models cannot be linked, uh, snapped to this. So even if you try to use them, uh, they will not be distorted mm -hmm. uh, along with the perspective. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. So you won't be able to drag and drop any of your characters in it and have them warp along mm. the fish eyes. You'll have to either figure that out, figure that out on your own end, or some other uh, 3D program might yeah. be able to do that. <clears throat> so next is our highly requested uh, alignment and distribution functions. So this was one of our mm. top requested features. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of people yes. talking about it. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, every time you mm -hmm. have uh, just a lot of different, a lot objects. of different, yeah, a lot of different objects mm -hmm. that you need to be in line, you had to manually drag them mm -hmm. and align them and kind of eyeball it. And like it. use like maybe you could use a ruler and then try mm -hmm. snapping, but which is always a nightmare. I mean, yeah, that is <laughs> annoying. But here uh, you see this new palette. This is the align distribute palette. Uh, you can align and distribute and distribute at different intervals. And you can choose uh, how you want to align. And you can also choose uh, many objects or different layers uh, and then just play around with the setting. So here we have our demonstrator is now ordering everything, uh, aligning them nicely. So, and fast. <laughs> so aligning each, each uh, row. Yeah. And then you can align each column. Making me hungry with cupcakes. <laughs> and now they're um, a bit more in order than before. Um, and also our next feature mm -hmm. we're going on to is uh, liquify yes. on multiple layers. Yes, we have an update to the liquify feature. So up until now, you could only use liquify on one layer, but now it is applicable to multiple layers at once. So right now we have the, this character right here. So there's a line art, there's different mm -hmm. uh, parts of the face, there's all these decorations, um, just multiple layers of things that yeah. are on top it's of like each other. a complex drawing, so you want to keep these layers mm -hmm. separate, right? Yeah, so up until now, you would have to flatten this and then apply liquify, and that could be bit of a difficult process if there are things mm. that you want to keep but now we can use liquify to just select the layers we want to adjust and apply to that so right now she's uh, applying it to the <laughs> very easily understood to the eyes mm -hmm. so the eyes could be made up of line art there could be the yeah. iris there could be the cornea there's, there's just multiple 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 layers there but you can just select all of them apply liquify to them and just leave them as separate layers at the end yeah it's really good if you want to just quickly edit your piece at the end but you don't want to merge the layers because you want to keep them separate for many reasons that you want to like edit them later mm -hmm. you want to take a color out whatever but now you can do it yeah Especially, for example, if you're working with a client, that could be easy to work as well. They come back with, oh, can you make these adjustments? And it's non-destruct, uh, it's, uh, mm. you don't have to have them flattened. Yeah. So easier you don't, to you don't lose everything that you painstakingly ordered into layers. Mm -hmm. um, so we've gone through a lot of different features, but there are some that we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, a little bit of additions, a little bit of improvements. Uh, let's look at the slides. So we have new filters. Um, so we have the spin blur, which is a blur that, of course, applies as a spin. So it looks like you're rotating. Right now we have this on the bulb. Um, you could use it for wheels, tires, just mm -hmm. uh, to show camera movement, for yeah. example. So we have a geometric distortion filter. So it kind of mm -hmm. applies a lens-ish distortion to the screen. We cool. also have convert to panorama, so mm -hmm. it will take an image and distort it to look as if it was a uh, panoramic uh, oh, image. Cool. And uh, yeah, this is good for uh, everyone who speaks Thai, Portuguese, Indonesian, 
uh, simplified Chinese, uh, not on Windows Mac OS, but now at least there is the UI available mm -hmm. for you to use, uh, which should hopefully make it easier to use. Mm -hmm. And we also have text tool improvement. So you can now select multiple texts with the text tool and move, transform them all at once. Uh, you also have a wrap text function. So it'll make yeah. uh, automatic line breaks uh, per word, not per letter yes. as it was before. <laughs> Very good. And also certain character combinations will be, will be replaced with the appropriate ligatures. So that's very, very, very nice for people who are specific about that. Yeah, and if you're somebody who has a lot of layers, uh, this one is for you. Um, you can use your keywords to find the layers that you're searching for. Mm -hmm. um, especially good uh, if you have like panels that are all um, divided up into layers mm -hmm. and then in folders, it's kind of a nightmare to find those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so other improvements are saving files as new and overwrite them or do backup recovery as a background yeah. process so you won't be interrupted. Uh, you can also apply fog to a 3D layer. So like it'll, <laughs> yes. that changes in density. So according to distance, so you'll, the, as the 3D objects go further away from the camera, there will be a white fog or you can actually change yeah, the color. Change of the it. color yeah. So it kind of fades out into the distance. Um, good for comics if you don't want just the screen to end there. Um, also different new paneling tools for webtoons. So scro webtoon scrolling comics, my apologies. Uh, such as adding and removing a vertical space, uh, add or delete panels more easily when making a webtoon. Uh, that's always nice to have mm. quality of life improvements. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we have a lengthy release notes yes. on the site. So please check that for all of the bug fixes uh, and improvements, everything that mm -hmm. we talked about here and more. Mm -hmm. And we will update it as um, we find out things or if we add anything, have, to have new announcements. So please make sure to check those out. So uh, the big question is how do you even get to use version 2.0? Mm -hmm. Well, well, if so, if you're a first time user of Clip Studio Paint, if you have never used Clip Studio Paint before, there we have uh, multiple options. Of course, there is a monthly usage plan for a single device. What this means is that you will only be using one device to draw. So you won't be using a computer and an iPad, for example. You'll just be using an, a computer or an iPad. So we have Pro and EX options for that. The monthly usage plans will always get the latest version of Clip Studio Paint. Yes. So uh, even after 2.0, you will always get the latest updates, latest features. Um, and yeah, you just update through the store as you would mm -hmm. normally. So mm -hmm. uh, no extra work required. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who only use smartphones, we have a smartphone plan, which is also a monthly system. So there is Pro and EX for that as well. It, that is our most cheapest option. Um, and also for Windows. But there's no pen pressure support, so yes, beware. Yes, yes, be, please be careful. Um, there is no pen pressure support for uh, smartphones. You can simulate it through uh, brush settings, but mm -hmm. there is no native brush support, uh, pen pressure support. So um, please make sure to check that and um, be aware of that before yeah. starting out with a smartphone plan. Uh, for Windows and Mac OS, we have the download versions. So we have one-time purchase options and uh, or as a perpetual license. So those are uh, listed right here. Mm -hmm. For the download versions, the one-time purchase options, you will be able to use version 2.0 and all of its features, but, and uh, my phone, excuse mm -hmm. me, you will also receive all stability up updates. So right. let's say we find a bug, let's say you find an error, you will receive all of them that improves stability. So we will not leave you with the initial 2.0 very, very start at the beginning. We will provide stability options. Yeah. But you will not be able to receive uh, the updates leading up to 3.0. Mm -hmm. The feature updates. Yes, yeah. the feature updates. So if you want to use those, you will have a, either need a update pass or uh, have a monthly usage plan. So please um, review those options, uh, take a look at mm -hmm. those options as well. Yeah, and if you already have version one and you want to figure out how to start using version mm -hmm. two, um, yes. here's a slide on that. As you just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, update pass. Uh, it's 12 months. Um, some people are getting confused, but this is a 12 month pass mm -hmm. 
valid for 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and then this links up to your existing perpetual license. So if you have a version one perpetual license and you link a 12 month pass to it, that means you can start using version 2.0 without buying another perpetual license. Mm -hmm. Uh, you only need one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. You don't. So in this case, you do not need to purchase 2.0, as Alex mentioned. So if you have the update pass, which is nine dollars, uh, nine dollars ninety nine cents per year, or uh, twenty eight ninety nine per for EX users, uh, you do not need to purchase another license. You can start using 2.0 immediately. So f for if you would like to own a perpetual license version of 2.0. Uh, we do have uh, discounted version upgrades. So if you are moving from version one to version 2.0 and you want a perpetual license of 2.0, that is for $19.99. Uh, $19 and um, at the prices here, the EX is $56.99 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, were, we had a special campaign with after January 1st, 2022. Uh, you get a complimentary version 2.0 uh, perpetual license and uh, you will need to claim that through a site um, or you will get an email. So please check our site for how to claim it if you have any questions about mm -hmm. how to claim it. Um, right now on our site, we have a, a simple test that you can take to determine what plan would be best for you. So if you check out our homepage, it should be an option that you can choose and figure out if um, you would like to, if you're interested mm -hmm. in 2.0. Yeah, and that's our uh, features and the whole price guide on 2.0. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that you have your eye on that you would like to try out? Um, yes, but I'm not very good at shading. Um, <laughs> so I would like to try out some auto shading yeah. um, or shading assist, uh, see what it works out. And yeah, if I can get some practice in, that's always great. Um, anything you like it? Um, it looks fun when you're doing the uh, hand <laughs> scanner. <laughs> so actually, I kind of want to use that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the best at hand poses. Uh, I'd like to think I'm not the worst, but it would be interesting to pose in different ways to even use that as a practice mm -hmm. for drawing my hands. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I'd just like to say that uh, here at Celsius, we aim to improve Clip Studio Paint. Mm -hmm. Um, and make it the best app for your creative activities. Mm -hmm. um, so we hope that this update is fun and that you have fun creating it. Uh, would you like to say anything else, Gina? Um Yeah, uh, so we always, always want to f uh, listen and hear what everyone, how everyone is using Clip Studio Paint, what kind of uh, features they think are great, what kind of features would need maybe some improvements in the future. If there is anything you would like to see in Clip Studio Paint, please let us know. We are on Twitter. We are on most social media, I think. We also yeah. have a TikTok channel if you'd like to watch that, if you're interested. Um, so anywhere that you can find us, please, if you let us know in the comments of uh, any anything, honestly, any kind of feedback, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very yeah. much. Bye. Bye.